Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no man, I still go Go, go Yo, yo, what's going on? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's your hostess with the mostest, it's PK, our Pastor Keenan Riley, back with another episode of People Suck, Love Them Anyways. And as always, I am joined by my sidekick, Nikki Nick, who's chowing down on some uh, Walmart water. Can you chow down on water? Can you chow down? Oh, absolutely, Uh, man. Uh, You can... can, um, I feel like if your water's chunky, you need to stop. <laughs> you need to throw that away. Shout out to my people in Flint, Michigan today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for sure. You know what I mean? Uh, for anybody who's listening, we're praying. Mm-hmm. And we hope Feel that, free to come uh, down. We got some. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it may not be the best, but it's probably better. Uh, hey, it's got to be better. Yeah, than what you're drinking. So mm-hmm. um, shout out to everybody, man, that continues to hit that download button. Tell other people about People Suck, Love Them Anyways. And uh, uh, added another, is it a country? Sure. In the, Solom- I don't know. The, yeah, the Solomon Islands. The Solomon Islands that, yeah. that my friend Nick, who I ha- I know nothing about geography for the most part, but has said that it is off the coast of Australia. Apparently, uh, mate. So, yeah, I, was gonna, I, was gonna, I thought you was going to say something else, but you said mate. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, mate. I get you. Yeah. Um, yep. But, uh, yeah, off the coast of Australia, man, which is, that's uh, that's amazing. Like, that's pretty cool. Mm. I don't know what goes on in the Solomon, uh, Solomon Islands, but... I don't do know, think? probably giant spiders and killer animals, just I'm like Australia. You. But I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go there. Uh, I'd rather go to like Hawaii if I was going to go to an island. I but. feel like you have to be a different breed of person uh, to battle what Australians do, man. Yeah, like, I know. like I don't know how Bluey makes it. I, I don't <laughs> like, know, like, man. Like you have to have another level of faith. Uh, I feel like to be in Australia and mm-hmm. uh, know that there are kangaroos that are on steroids that will kill you. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, you never hear of missionaries going to. Australia. Uh, right, I mean, they, yeah, they are like, never. They, they will go to war torn countries, but God forbid they <laughs> yeah. go to Australia, yeah, and get lost in the, in the territory <laughs> yeah. in the outback for like yeah. a week. They will not come back the same, if at all. Uh, so yeah, so you never hear about that. That is true. It's a mm-hmm. good point to bring up, man. Mm-hmm. Good point to bring up. So, uh, but yeah, man, shout out to the Solomon Islands, and then uh, of course every other country, every other state here in the U.S., man, it continues to hit that play button and download button, man. We thank you so much. It means a lot to us. I know we say it every single week, but, uh, you know, we never want to miss that opportunity to just let people know that uh, it means a lot, man, to uh, for you to just tune in and uh, and see what we're all about. So uh, there's a thousand upon thousand upon thousand of podcasts out there. Uh, so, you know, for you to take the time just to hit the download button on ours and listen, man, that, that's uh, truly humbling uh, and it means a lot. So um, pretty productive week, pretty good week, man. Um and, uh, man, I tell you what, just, uh, uh, a good service today. Um, I feel like at fruition and, uh, just one of those things where, uh, you know, I, uh, I feel like that we really needed to hear. I don't know if, uh, I'll be honest. I don't know what, what, I don't know what, if any, uh, churches wise, uh, are preaching on things like, um, things like forgiveness, but not just forgiveness, like, it starts with you, you know, um, the, the, the forgiveness of, or I'm not looking at other people's faults and situations and stuff like that. Like, um, I've kind of been on this journey for about the last, I don't know, week and a half, two weeks, something like that. Uh, I've been fast in social media from the first of June. And, um, um, I tell you what, man, it's been, it's been crazy. Uh, we talked about this a lot, just about like idle scrolling and things like that and just getting engulfed in social media in itself. Um, so I've had the, the time and the opportunity, uh, just to get in the Bible more, read more, pray more, things like that. And, um, just, you know, hit different podcasts. I was telling you, I've been listening to some of our services back from, uh, you know, the previous weeks and things like that. And just, uh, really trying to be fed that way, man. But, uh, I've been all over the Bible over the last couple of weeks. And, um, just, uh, one thing that really spoke to me, uh, and let me, let me pull it up real quick. I, I think I've misquoted this to everybody about, uh, the Bible plan that I was in the middle of. Uh, it's called, Are You Really Okay? 
Um, no. and yeah, right. <laughs> Are you really okay? And then the one before that was like, kind of like revamping your mind. Mm. Uh, you know, just, just clearing out those toxic thoughts. Um, I know we talk about that a lot about taking those thoughts captive and, you know, really kind of picking and choosing what's coming into your life and what's not. And, um, one of the things that, uh, I've been reading on my own, but also been doing, you know, just a lot of plans and stuff. Um, but one, one place it took me was to, uh, Matthew seven, uh, about, you know, Jesus talking and it's like our mindset of, uh, of, of forgiveness and of working and, and of grace and judgment and things like that. And, uh, so that's what we talked about today over in Matthew seven. And if you go read like verses one through six, Jesus is basically saying that before you go against anybody else or before you, you know, go to your, your friend or, or somebody that is messing up, uh, in a lot of areas, or it could be one um, that before you go and you and you try to ridicule them or, or cast them down or whatever for making that bad decision, it's like step back and look at the things that are going on in your life, you know, in your in your own life. And, you know, whenever you do that, it's like you best be sure. And I've said this a million times, like if you're going to make a mountain out of a molehill, be sure you're ready to die on that mountain. Um be sure that if you're going to interject yourself into something like that, that you have to be able to um, handle the heat that's going to come with it. Um, as, as the as the example that I gave today, you know, as a kid, um, whenever I would annoy the heck out of my big brother, and then he would come chasing after me, and I'd run to my mom, and, and she would go, you can dish it out, but you can't take it. And, I mean, that's a truth. It, it, and it's not only a truth for 1990 little baby Keenan, <laughs> but it's also, um, it's also the truth for most Christians today. Uh, you know, that we're always, we, we always want to be, what can I say, Nick? We always want to be fixers. Um, but never, but never fixed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like we want to be fixers. Like we want to tell everybody else what they should be doing, how they should be doing it. Um, the, the thought process behind it. But like when somebody comes to us and says, you know, Hey man, um, you're kind of struggling, uh, you know, or you're, you're, you're battling or whatever, you know, what, let, let me give you some advice right here. And, and so I, I feel like we're fixers, but we never want to be fixed because if we're fixed, then, uh, as we talked about today, it eliminates a lot like, and we still got the planks over here on the, on the, uh, on the stage, but it, it, it eliminates a lot of excuses, you know, whenever we become fixed. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we, we live in those excuses. We become comfortable with those excuses. And uh, so I think today was just a good time just to be able to focus on um, not others, uh, but ourselves and, and, and to fix ourselves. That's what the Bible says, to fix ourselves. And then we will be able to see clearly on how to help other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we've we talked many different times, I believe, you know, and there, there was a lot to unpack. I feel like in today's message, you know, there's many times that, you know, the whole congregation gets quiet because they know you know, that they're all struggling with, you know, this, that, or the other, you it's, know, yeah. all, you know us, or, us as well. Um, you know, th- there was a lot of good, good stuff packed in there. And, you know, just I think we as, um, I don't even want to say just Christians, you know, we as human beings are just so bad about, um, you know, rather than, you know, working on ourselves, we just, you know, point fingers at other people. You know, mm-hmm. we, we say, and I think we're, we're a very comparative culture. Um, I think yeah. it's just the best way to say that these days. Um, you know, there's the whole keeping up with the Joneses situation. You know, I want to look the best, talk the best, have the best, all these sorts of things. Um, and then we're so bad and neglectful about actually exposing. And we've talked about this recently uh, about exposing what we're struggling with and being yeah. vulnerable and, you know, really kind of talking to the people amongst us about what we're struggling and dealing with sharing our testimonies and things of that nature uh, because we all want that that um, photoshopped cookie cutter you know family portrait uh, I think I heard it on the, the highlights, yeah, yeah, the highlights. The yeah, highlights. The, we share the highlights on social media and, mm-hmm. and all those sorts of things you know and we, we don't address the the pro you know how you know we took this family portrait we all look great happy and smiling but we were cussing each other out on the way <laughs> to yeah, take the photo or right. you know we were on the brink of divorce you know tomorrow uh you know it's just all these different things that we don't talk about but we present the best of ourselves yeah and because we present the best of ourselves i think a lot of times we expect the best of everyone else right uh, you know we, we look at somebody else and if they aren't and I, I talked about this with the youth on uh wednesday night you know we get impatient with other people yeah um you know we i was reading through the old testament and was talking about you know how the, the israelites were growing impatient with Moses and Aaron and God and they weren't getting to the promised land when they wanted to and they wanted to go back to Egypt and all these sorts of things and so they got impatient and God punished their impatience and then you see Moses get impatient with the Israelites and smacks the rock instead of speaking to it mm-hmm. uh, so the water would come out 
out. And, you know, we're, we're so, I guess I want to say impatient with other people, but we forget and neglect how patient God has been with us. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we have screwed up time and time again. We've messed up time and time again. You know, we're not perfect. We're not put together, even though we present that way. Um, and so what we do is we get impatient with other people. Um, you know, we, we say, you know, hey, if you don't do what I want you to do, when I want you to do it, how I want you to do it, um, then, you know, you're not for me. You're against me. And you know, I don't like that. And I'm not going to fight it with that. You know, we see it in politics all the time. Um, you know, we get so impatient with other people and, you know, all that to just kind of bring it back into the, the idea of we, we oftentimes, you know, neglect what we are struggling with and point out what other people are struggling with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of times, you know, we, we do that to feel better about ourselves sometimes. Oh, yeah. um, I think that may even be the, the biggest driving force behind it. You know, we screw up and we know how big of a screw up we are oftentimes. And so what we do is we try to point out somebody else's sins, somebody else's flaws and say, at least I'm not that bad. At right. least I'm not doing that. At least I'm not getting drunk every weekend. At least I'm not sleeping around. At least I'm not doing this. At at least I'm not doing that. And it makes us feel better about ourselves. It makes yeah. us feel better about our mess by looking yeah. at someone's else, someone else's mess. Right. Uh, and, and that's not a healthy way to live, you know, and that's not a Christian like thing to do. Um, you know, we, we can't as Christians, you know, patience is a fruit of the spirit. You know, we can't be impatient with people. We can't, you know, uh, you know, be hateful and judgmental about other people, you know, and, and because we have flaws, we have things that we struggle and deal with, you know, and I, I think back to you, you talk about this all the time, you know, about if, if we were to wear our sins on our shirts, mm-hmm. when we walk into this church building, yeah. there'd be a lot of quiet folk <laughs> like, right oh yeah, you know, we, yeah. we wouldn't be you know we would uh, all be you know kind of exposing what we're dealing and struggling with out for everybody to see um you know and i think we need to be and, and we say this I, I feel like it's like beating a dead horse but we have got to be i think more vulnerable as christians you know to, to talk about what we're dealing with and as keenan was saying fix ourselves before we can mm-hmm. fix you know before we even think about fixing anybody else yeah um you know and again it's not our job to fix other people you know we can as, as we've been called to do is to lead god direct give wisdom them advice all those sorts of things as it's been given to us by god yeah. um you know but we're not supposed to again you know just sit there and you know critique every single thing that somebody else does you know there's some things that we know are sinful like hey i wouldn't recommend doing that i wouldn't do that but again they're not any less of a human being than i am yeah you know we can't get impatient with that person and you know every time we expect them to do a certain thing at a certain time for a certain way you know we can't cut them out and, and push them off and brush them out and kick them out just because they didn't do it how we wanted and when we wanted and all that sort of th- sort of thing i know you said um to be vulnerable and whenever you said vulnerable the word authentic really mm-hmm. hit my spirit um authentic and and vulnerable maybe run hand in hand but I, I think authentic is just being real mm-hmm. uh just being raw into the core uh of of yourself you know and to me that's one of the biggest compliments that you can ever get from people is just the fact of when people say you're authentic it's like you're just real Mm -hmm. you know like you you're just you're not this persona of somebody that is uh fixated on perfection but instead you're you're fixated on the pursuit of getting better Mm -hmm. uh with jesus and and that's the thing like where uh, again, we say this time and time again, if you're going into a church house and you're sitting down on Sunday mornings and you don't feel like you can be real, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Like that is a situation. Now, whether that is a you problem, whether that is the church's problem, you know, whatever the case is, whether you feel like you're going to be judged, if you are judged by your sins and by your shortcomings, by the people that are in that church that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Like, there's some things that we can talk about right there. But um, for me, you know, the authenticity of if, if you come to me and be like, you know what, like, I can help, I can do, I can go, I can lead, I can serve, I, I'll do whatever you want me to do. But just know this about me, you know, mm-hmm. like, just know this, just know that um, my attendance might be crappy sometimes, my commitment might be crazy sometimes, my, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, like what we talk about, I'm a recovering addict, or I'm, you know, this, or I'm that, and like, whatever the case is, like, if you're just authentic, if you're just real, like, you know, I, I'm a screw up, and I know mm-hmm. it, but, but, um, you know, the crazy part to me over just the journey of ministry is, We've said three things that that God uses people that are willing, that are available, and that are obedient. Uh, Willing, available, and obedient. And, you know, one thing that I've had to learn about ministry is that uh, God is going to use people when they show up, but not every time they show up. Um, And and so I want us to understand that that aspect as well, Um, you know, that... 
sitting in a church pew, we talked about this, I think, maybe last week, about how sitting in a church pew eight weeks in a row doesn't mean that you're growing. It means that you're showing up, which is great, but it doesn't mean that you're growing. Mm-hmm. But collectively, if you show up one time in those eight weeks and God decides to use you on that day, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like... um you know, the, with with as far as like judgment and things like that, I, we we get into a huge um, debacle with ourselves because we and we've said this. I know, like, how many episodes are we going to just be like, we've said this, yeah, we said this, we said this, but like, we get the into people this, will just go back and watch, them all right, and right, all of them, right. You know, we wouldn't have to repeat ourselves. This all is the true. Time. We could just talk about just sports or yeah. the weather or whatever. <laughs> but uh, we get the, we get into this debacle of we put our expectations on other people. Mm-hmm. How I would do it, what I would think about it, or if I was this and if I was that. And God has God has really had to break me from that, and I mean break me from it. Like I used to be that guy, that person that was like, you know, I want you to do it like I would do it, and that's just not the case. Mm-hmm. Because you know, as much as what we talk about the Davids of the next generation, there will never be another David. There will be David like people. Mm-hmm. There will be David, or there will be Moses like people. There will be Elijah like people. But you know, there was only one Elijah. There's only one David. There's only one Moses. And and there's only one Kenan. And there's only one Nick. And there's only one whoever that's out there that's listening to this. And you know, for, for us to think, well, you know, I'm going to mold or I'm going to just, um, what's, what's the word I'm even looking for? Not train, but like whenever you're trying to develop almost like a carbon copy of yourself mm-hmm. almost, you know, and it's like, I'm going to make, I'm going to fit and mold this person to be just like me. Well, the problem is God did not call that person to be just like you. God did not call that person to be you. Mm-hmm. You know, God gave you a specific set purpose identity plans all that good stuff for your life and we get in trouble i feel like that and we feel like we're helping people you know i need you to do this and i need Mm -hmm. you to do that i need you to and and it's like we talked about today about how we lead people sometimes into situations that we think are helping them but really it's hindering them Mm -hmm. because of we're wanting people to to be like us and that's that's certainly not the case and it's not going to be the case in heaven it's not going to be the case if you read through the Bible, uh, and it's and it's not the case in the society or the days in which we live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, I, I don't think you know you're never going to be able to you know um, I guess reach your unique potential in Christ if you're copying someone else's. True, uh, you know, I, I think you know we we can't expect to to stand out if we're trying to um, you know I guess you know camouflage ourselves into looking exactly like someone else, talking yeah. exactly like someone else. And I think a lot of times we as Christians, you know, we get. It's like it's it's like I get this idea in my head of like when we're you know some Christians believe that we're all going to be like these unified gray blobs in heaven worshiping God. Yeah, you know it's like hey you know you, you we're all going to be in heaven one day you know with our hands folded singing hymnals unto you know God with you know and, and we're all going to look exactly the same dress the same way mm-hmm. so you know all these sorts of things. And again, I'm not going to sit here and say you know it, that you know what it's going to look like for sure. I, I don't know for sure what heaven will look like, but I, I have to believe that you know God created us in His image and that we all have unique fingerprints because God. God wants us to be unique. God wants us to be different, you know, and we, we should, you know, in, in, a, in a sense to celebrate those differences, we shouldn't be always tra- copying or sorry, we shouldn't always be trying to copy the, the looks and behaviors and words and actions of someone else. You know, we, we all have something else unique to bring to the table, something unique that we can do. You may miss out on your calling by trying to copy someone else's, yeah. you know, and I think that that's something that, you know, we have to be aware of, you know, we can force these people or, you know, I, I say force with quotations, but, you know, we can try to force congregants to so look a certain way, behave a certain way, sing a certain way, dress a certain way, expect all of that of them. And, and in doing so, we miss somebody who, who wants to stand out and do something even greater for God. You know, and so we limit that person. Yeah. You know, we, we limit what God can do in their lives. We limit what God can do through that person mm-hmm. because they limit themselves by saying, well, I can't do this because of the way things are here. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't dress this way because of the way things are here. I can't speak out in the middle of service, even though God wants me to, because of the way things are here. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that we can get in trouble with that, you know, and we've talked all the time about, you know, the, 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 the dangers of denomination, I guess is how we say it. But, you know, just, you know, because we have all these rules and regulations.
regulations and procedures set in place. And we're, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, with denominations is us trying to, again, turn all of these people that come through the doors into a cookie cutter version of the person on the pulpit. Yeah. You know, and we, we, we were like, hey, you have to look this way, talk this way, believe this way, act this way, say this way, do this. And again, you know, as a Christian, there are certain things that you should do, should say, should believe, all those sorts of things. Um, but again, God created us to be unique. You know, God created us with different talents, different voices, different skills, different abilities. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it is up to us not to, you know, I think two twofold here, you know, some Christians, we should try not to force those people to behave like us. Right. And as the as those other Christians, we should try not to behave like them. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we should be able to celebrate our differences and, and be different, be unique, be creative, um, and bring something new, bring something different to the table that nobody else has brought before that is beneficial to the kingdom of God as a whole. Yeah, and, and like today we got, you know, we talked about getting caught up in that decision-making process about how, you know, Christians, man, 2024, Christians should be the epicenter of light in the world. Mm-hmm. And we're talking freedom, we're talking peace, we're talking love, we're talking joy, we're talking grace, we're talking forgiveness, uh, you know, things like that. And and it's like, but we're not. And we're and we're actually quite the opposite most of the time. You know, you're you're seeing Christians mad, you're seeing Christians angry, you're seeing Christians frustrated, you're seeing Christians broken, you're seeing Christians mm-hmm. that are struggling. And it's like the question becomes why? And I know there's a lot of moving variables in there, but as we talked about today, one of the main ones is that we attach our emotions to other people's choices. And if somebody makes a choice that we don't feel is the right choice, then our joy is automatically replaced with anger and frustration. Mm -hmm. And anger and frustration, as we talked about in Matthew 7, you know, the Bible says, do not judge or yet you will be judged. And with the same measure of which you judged that person. So, and then, you know, it goes on to say that you're recognizing a speck of sawdust in someone else's eye whenever you have a full plank hanging out of yours and i'm still referencing the uh the planks yeah, over the here planks on the floor, floor yeah right. over here still i was wondering um, what your point to and i, 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 I just like kept on yeah I, just, I was like oh there they are yeah i just kept on just fall almost falling off the table mm-hmm. to uh to, to point at them but and they're off screen for those watching <laughs> right um but uh yeah so you know we get caught up in that decision making process and our emotions are attached to it and 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 if we're just being completely honest today which i hope we can be is that more Christians are led by emotions rather than spirit. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is is that what we feel, what we feel is exactly what we act off of. Mm -hmm. And it's it's our decision-making process. It's our... Reactionary. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I've always said, like, like it is... We we need to be proactive, not reactive. So if if we're praying before, if we're praying... In the in preparation, if we're praying before the process occurs, you know we're not going to be so reactive whenever mm-hmm. something happens, and it's like, oh my god, what do I do? You know, and it's like, and that can start a domino effect of what we talked about today of of allowing these planks to come into your life, these weighted mm-hmm. planks, you know, these weighted planks of now you're looking at everybody else making decisions, and and and. This is why, again, I'm so if, – if fasting social media has taught me anything, it's that I'm very quick to form opinions. Mm-hmm. And and it's like I'll be scrolling through and just seeing something, and it's like, oh, you don't live like that, or, you know, this, that, and the other. Oh, you think you found love, you know, and all this good stuff. And it's like, that's just my opinion. But it's, it's, it's a speck of sawdust. Mm-hmm. That if I allow long enough, it's going to make a board or a plank in my life. Yeah, and then think, I'm carrying that plank. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, as you're saying that, to me, like, social media, you know, we, we see it as you know, we, we're spending so much time focused on other people rather than ourselves. Right. You know, and we, we don't spend, I think, is what we want to bring back to this is, you know, we we don't spend enough time focused on ourselves. Yeah. You know, and I think sometimes we, we feel selfish. We feel like, you know, guilty for, for focusing on ourselves, taking time for ourselves. But, you know, we've talked about this time and time again, you know, if you don't love yourself, you can't love someone else True. truly. You know, you can't pour from an empty cup. You have to be poured into. You have to take yeah. care of yourself. You have to partake in, in self-care activities that are healthy and beneficial and help you, you know, de-stress and help you get that stuff out and help you feel better and feel mm-hmm. lighter. You know, and, and it's just we, we spend so much time every day, every week, every month, every year – 
looking at somebody else, wanting what they have, being mm. mad at them for not doing things this way. Even though you we're know, not it, supposed to do that. Yeah, like it, that, exactly. that is a commandment. Like do not mm. do not covet thy neighbor's yep. stuff. You know, yeah, do like, not covet their stuff. Yeah, do not you their know, wife. To, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. their husbands. Yeah, um, you know yeah, things like that. We're guilty of that. I think. Oh, you know, that I, a I thousand think percent. It, it, and social media has definitely not helped. That's for dang sure. I um, mean, you know, it was definitely a problem before social media, but it's gotten even worse after social media or during social media. However you want to say it, uh, because you know, again, you know, as, as we've we've had these conversations, and I've I've put a lot of thought into doing a social media cleanse myself because I am one of the worst about looking at what somebody else has and wanting that. Or you know, I, I thought of it this way is. Um, I, I read a book or no, I think it was actually just a, a radio show one time. Uh, and this person was talking about uh, money of all things. And, and she was saying something along the lines of, you know, when we look at something and want it, it's not because we want it. It's because we want to, we want other people to see us in it and like it. You know, so like yeah. when, when we, you know, we see that new car, it's not because, oh, I, I, want, that I want that car. It's because I want, I want other people to look at me in that car and want that car. Yeah. And I want other people to see what I have and want that. I want people yeah. to look at me and be like, you know, clap or like, wow, that's cool. Or yeah. we, we want to look cool. The it, reactions. It, it, we want those reactions. We mm-hmm. want those emotions. We want, you know, and again, it's because, and I really do truly believe this, it's because we're not satisfied and content with who we are, what we have and where we're going. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and I think that we, we've, we as Christians, you know, we've allowed that worldly mindset to flood into the church mm-hmm. you know and we're, we're we're not setting the standard the world is in that situation right you know we're, we don't have a big enough worship team we don't have enough lights we don't have enough mu- you know or this that or the other we don't have enough congregants we don't have enough because we're looking out at other churches and comparing what they have to what we have mm-hmm. and we're like you know if we had that we'd be the cooler looking church yeah. not because if we had that we'd be a better church we'd be building better kingdom of god but because we would look better we would be more desirable we would be you know more popular and all those sorts of things yeah and i think that's a very very um, common mindset that we see not only in the world unfortunately we see it in the church uh, we, you know there's so many Christians again that sit in here in the pews or sit in whatever church service you go to there's people in, in business places throughout the country who are always trying to keep up with the Joneses always one, thinking about and wondering what do I need to do now and I, and I think there is a, a healthy line there you know as far as having wisdom to you know to, to, to make better decisions you know mm-hmm. financially to make better decisions with your health to make better decisions with your family mm-hmm. you know there's a difference there between you know making wise God Godly decisions that you've prayed about and constantly looking and wanting and desiring more and more and more and more. Um, and so I think that's something we definitely need to look into. I think going back to that view of success, like what you were talking about with that person in that car and wanting people to see it. And it's like, we are driven. Like we don't want people to think we're failing. Mm-hmm. That's it. Like we don't want people we'll to think credit we're card debt failing. So we don't look like we're right. Failing. And, and like, I, I can remember, um, you know, there's there's not been a Sunday probably this year, I feel like, that we've looked out over this congregation and been like, looks pretty thin today. Mm-hmm. Even on like our thinnest Sunday, it was like a huge crowd for a couple years ago. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And and but I can remember Nick like first starting out in ministry here. And, and again, I mean, our services, you know, and, and we're nothing like, you know, we're not global or, you know, anything like that. We're not building seven locations and stuff like that yet. Yeah. Uh, yep. yet. Um, but you know, I can remember starting out on Sundays and being like, you know, 30, 40 people and, or, or even on a Wednesday night where it would be like 10 mm-hmm. and, I, I can remember thinking to myself, like, where can I put the camera in a position where it doesn't look like this place is empty? Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you a question. Why was I thinking that for? Why was my mindset, I don't want people watching this thinking I'm not mm-hmm. preaching to anybody? You know what I'm yeah, saying? It's like we want to be more attractive rather than like um, you know you, you, beneficial. You, you, or you want the you want people mm-hmm. to view you through the lens of success. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's like, so I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, like what we talked about today, we're going to post these highlight reels. We're going to post the, 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 the pictures and the moments and the, all oh, little Johnny graduated high school today. And, and it's like, oh, but little Johnny was in jail two weeks ago for something. Or, you know, it's like, so we didn't see little Johnny's mug shot, but we saw little Johnny with the, with the cap and gown mm-hmm. on. And it's like, you know, we, we, we spend so much time trying to suppress what what might could even truly help people uh in the process because you know people are going to look at our ministry one day 
and, and be like, man, like they just they just came on the map. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, absolutely not. Like we've been doing this for a long time, man. It's just the fact of that now it's caught fire, caught traction, and God's doing what God does. Um, but it's like, you know, you got to go back and think to yourself and go, man, like, you know, they just blew up overnight. We talked mm-hmm. about this. No, man, it's like we preached to 12 people, to 14 people, to 20 people, to 40 people, to 100 people, to 200, to, to whatever, you know, whatever it wants to become uh, through Christ. And it's like we, we get so caught up, man, in, in that, like, wanting everybody to see us, wanting everybody to see our success and wanting everybody to see what we're doing and what we're about and um, it, it's so funny because when Facebook started, it, it, when Facebook started, you saw everybody's food mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and like, and yeah. kids, like if you had kids, you posted kids, if you have food, you posted what you were eating or mm-hmm. what you were making. Yeah. And now I'm on the toilet eating. I'm yeah, <laughs> like, I'm under- now it's just grown into mm-hmm. this, into this, you know, it's like, wow, so-and-so posted this food. I want to post this food yeah. and show what I'm eating. Yeah. Well, you know, this, like you said, keeping up with the Joneses mm-hmm. almost, well, they got a new house. Well, look at my new two story or mm-hmm. Hey, look at my new brand new car, you know, Oh, you got a you got a Ford. Look at this. I got you know whatever a Mercedes. Say, Don't come at me right now, uh, right? <laughs> um, you know, so it's like we we stay in this constant rat race of comparison, and we mm-hmm. say comparison is the quickest way to steal joy. Um, but not only just that, it's like we we label it, man, and 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 honestly. I think this is true. We label it as everything else but judgment. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, well, I, I'm not comparing myself. I just, you know, I, or, or, or oh, I'm not worried about them. I'm not, you know, and it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're actually judging the process of their life and where they are in their life. And, and and you're judging the means of their life by what they possess, mm-hmm. and 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 in turn that brings things back to you, which what we talked about today. We're not looking at ourselves going hey like why do i feel like i need to get this to keep up why mm-hmm. why do i feel like that was really something i had to step back and ask myself uh whenever whenever i went on this fast why do i feel the need to post every day that's a that's a good question. Yep. Why do I feel the need validation. to post every day? Is is it validation? Is it is it people interacting? Mm-hmm. Is it is it prayer? Is it truly making a difference in people's lives? Is it just building a bigger platform? Is it something that's going to wow somebody? Is mm-hmm. it what is the purpose? You know, and and I have to like I have to soul search that and be like, what is my validation? Um, what am I trying to accomplish with this? And if we step, yeah, if we step back and go, why am I doing this for? What, 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 you know, why am I angry for? Why am I, why, why am I making this decision? Why am I doing this instead of this? Whatever. Whenever we step back and we question things like that, then that turns the inward reflection. That's, that's why we don't have as many planks then. If we begin to question ourselves, mm-hmm. if we begin to look at our motives and, and, and look at, look at what we can do to get better individually. And, and like we talked about in the Bible today, Jesus makes it, he makes it personal to mm-hmm. us. You know, he says, do not judge or you will be judged. That's personal. Oh, and by the way, the measure in which you judge will be measured to you, you know, and it's like, oh, hey, and that sawdust you see in somebody else's, that's your plank Mm -hmm. that you're going to have to deal with. We flipped over to Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. It's talking about, hey, now let us, me and you, me and you, everybody that's watching, everybody's listening, let us shake off everything that's going to hold us back and cause us sin in our lives personal again talked about john chapter 5 the guy that was paralytic for 38 years he looks at him and he says do you want to be healed personal you know Mm -hmm. the problem that we get into was the response and it's the response of most christians today i had no one else to help get me to the water you see jesus's question was personal but his response was broad. His mm. response was including everybody around him. 
And it's like, if Jesus didn't conference call to ask if you wanted to be healed, he's not going to conference call whenever you make the choice to be mm-hmm. healed, you know? Yeah, it's so wild to me. I think as you were relaying that story today, it, it kind of hit me that I never read it that way myself. Of, right. You know, it, it's, and it, you know, I think I heard somebody say at one point, you know, how, how important some just, just single words are in the Bible for us to pay attention to mm-hmm. those those tenses and things of that nature, you know, where, where you know, that he asked, you know, do you want to be healed? Yeah. And the response was, they didn't bring me. Yeah, you know, and it, yeah. it's it, it's crazy. You know, I, I think I've even caught that. But what I didn't ever catch was, you know, why didn't he just answer? Why didn't and, he just you know, say it, yes? It's just like, yes, I want to be healed. Yeah, that's and, it. instead, it's you know, we're we're so quick to make excuses about yeah. everything. You yeah. know, why, why do you want to be healed? Oh, well, well, well. I mean, yeah, but I would, you know, I would, I would. But yeah. and, and it's so it's so crazy. And I think that's that's one thing that I've I've myself have tried. To be better at is your I've I've made the goal to be better at I haven't done haven't done better at it but uh, it is just saying yes or no you know I, I think it. you know we we get so uh, caught up in making excuses we get so worried about what someone's going to say what they're going to feel uh, you know how how they're going to react to situations instead of just saying yes or no yeah. you know do you want this to eat no do you want this or you right. know where, do you want to go here today you know it's not just no I don't want to go here it's well I yeah, would go but, here but you know uh, I, I got this going on this going on we are making excuses we're coming up with things you know I guarantee you everybody listening to this everybody watching this has at some point in their life made an excuse to not go somewhere yeah. instead of just saying no I won't go it's yeah. No, well, I, I would go, but uh, you know, everybody makes those statements, you know, because they don't want to, you know, appear, you know, whether it's guilty or selfish yeah. or you know what or you know whatever it is, you know, we, we're we're so it, it, again, this is just a lesson from the you know a lesson from the whole lesson today in the in the <laughs> the message, uh, you know, just to get better about saying yes or no, stop making excuses and, and trying to the word psychologically, I'll throw this one at you, uh, is called hedging. Some people may have heard that before, but uh, I learned about it when I was in college, right? I remember. I, went there. Uh, but, I just thought that's right. something you did to your like plants in your no. yard. But like uh, hedging is, uh, it's basically where instead of giving a solid response, you yeah. beat around the bush. Right. Uh, so you know, instead of saying you know, hey, do you want to eat this? Uh, or you know, like say for example, I used to teach as a kids all the time about relationships because hedging is very prevalent in relationships. And so, you know, when your boyfriend girlfriend asks, hey, where do you want to eat? And you know, you used to before you got in this relationship, you wanted to eat Dairy Queen twenty four seven three sixty five. You always wanted it. You always wanted Canes. You always wanted McDonald's. What whatever else yeah you know you always wanted that but then you get in a relationship because you want to please this other person they're like hey where do you want to eat at oh well i mean it doesn't matter wherever you want to go uh do you want to go to mcdonald's i hate mcdonald's yeah that's fine i guess uh yeah but you know we we get so bad about hedging i guarantee you if you take time this week if you're listening watching you know to to catch yourself making these hedging statements you know how many times does somebody ask you something and you beat around the bush you don't give a solid yes or no answer Mm -hmm. um you know and i guarantee you you'll find yourself doing it way more than you think uh, and, and I think it's just something that we as Christians especially need to get better at. Yeah, one thing I want to say, too, is that not everything deserves a response after the statement. Like, after mm-hmm. you make it an answer. Not everything requires an explanation. Yeah, exactly. That's where I was really going. Uh, yes well, or no, leave it at that. You know, do you want to be a part of this? Yes. That's mm-hmm. all you got to say. Uh, yes, but, you know, I got a lot of stuff going on. Then you need to say no. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then you just need to say no. Do you want to be a part of this? No, but I mean, if I could get some time, then, you know, then it's like, it's either yes or it's no. It's 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 yes or it's no. It doesn't deserve this buildup. It doesn't deserve this. Everything else is functioning around. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it's like, either yes, you can, or no. And, and I actually just caught myself, now that you say mm-hmm. that like that, like I actually caught myself doing this, so... Right after this podcast is taped, guess where I'm going? I'm going to some Canes. I'm going to go get some Canes. <laughs> Canes is like maybe an hour, hour 15 away from where we live. My wife's like, man, you ever going to use that gift card? I said, ah, man, I tell you, it's just, you know, I, I don't ever have time to go. Oh, you could go down this afternoon. Yeah, I can, but, <laughs> and I start, but, you know, by the time I drive down, by the time I get the food, by the time I get back, by the time I eat, then it's time for bed, and then it's time. And the whole time, I'm warning her to say, "Oh yeah, you're right. Okay. Don't, Don't worry, worry about, about it. it. Right? right? Don't worry about it." That that's the instead of me just saying, "Nah, I'd rather not go," mm-hmm. and leaving it at that. Yeah, but. And then because, and and here's what I wanted to say with that is, is as I was just getting ready this morning, not just for the message, but just getting ready to come to church, 
the Holy Spirit was working on me and saying, Keenan, a lot of times, a lot of times, if we're not ready to change, we'll t- we'll tell people that they don't understand what's happening to us because they don't agree with us. So our out is, is, you know, let's just say like you're going through whatever, uh, you know, you're going through a situation in your life. I'm giving you advice about it, or I'm listening to you say, I'll pray with you, you know, and then you go, well, you just don't understand. Mm -hmm. Ah, well, what do you mean? I don't understand. You know, Oh, well, you don't understand. If you understood, this is what you would be telling me to, well, then why do you need an answer? Mm-hmm. Why do you need... It seems like to me you already got it figured out, if that's the case. So so what do you really want? Do you want somebody to listen to you? Do you want somebody to feel sorry for mm-hmm. you? It's, do you want somebody to wallow in your in your mud, in your pride, in your, in your issues? You know, or are you asking for help and then willing to be able, oh, you don't understand, or go, you know what? I like the way that you look at this from a different angle. I think it, it makes a huge difference, but, um, but, but, but just to be able to look at things and go, you know, man, like I don't have everything figured out. I, I am the problem sometimes. Uh, I do get in the way sometimes. And, and, and I think like whenever we can look at that and, and, and make that a reality, not a, it's, it's everybody else's fault all the time. Mm-hmm. It, because it's not. It's not everybody. Because what do we do, what do we say today? We can only control us. We can only control us. Like me and you, you and me. We can only control us. That's it. And so, I can't control if everybody shows up. I can't control if everybody sings. I can't control if everybody prays. I can't control if everybody leans into the message. I can't control any of that. What can I control? I can control preaching what God gave me. I can control my emotions. I can control my my mind placement. The Bible says we can control our thoughts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I can control what is funneling through me. Outside of that, outside of that, outside of that, whether you're black, white, Cuban, Asian, whether you're rich, poor, whether you're homeless or five-story mansion somewhere, like I cannot control anything that goes on in your life, what you decide to do or anything else. And as I was telling people at the end of service today, that has been the most liberating and freedom-filled thing that I've truly experienced in just the first week, week and a half mm-hmm. of this whole fast is just the fact of that, number one, that I have to trust God's timing and process. It's all a process. I have to trust that. That's freedom right there. Man, it's in your time, Lord. You know, you got it coming down the pipeline. It's just in your time. That's freedom. Number two, hey, I can't control anybody else in this place but me. I can't worry about anybody else in this place but me. I'll pray for you. I, I was I wanted to hop on this afternoon and post this so bad, man, because I'm like in my room, I'm taking my clothes off, you know, changing clothes, come back to the podcast. And and the Holy Spirit just started speaking to me and it's like, cry for people, but don't ever let people be the reason you cry. Mm-hmm. Man, I was like, Oh my goodness. I will pray for you, but I will never let you pray on me. Oh my God. Like I started mm-hmm. getting stuff like that and I'm like trying to get in my notes. I'm like, da, 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 you know? <laughs> like, like I have, I've been like, in writing, July, man, yeah, y'all better watch yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> like it's coming. Um, but like, I've been like thinking about stuff like that where it's like, I can only control me. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's like, that is so liberating to think about where it's like, I don't have to worry about your reaction. I don't have to worry about like, because I don't, I won't answer for that. Mm-hmm. Now, I may answer for that as a leader in the church or whatever the case may be, but like I won't answer for anything you do. And whenever we get towards the heaven, you know, the heavenly gates and we're given an account for our lives, I will not answer for anything you posted, anything you said, anything you did. I, I won't do that. God will be looking at me and going, Kenan, what about you? You know, what about you? And that makes it personal. And it's just liberating to know. Mm-hmm. That we don't have to worry about that. I don't have to answer for anybody else but me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, one one thing I wanted to point out before I forget it, uh, you were saying it a second, uh, you know, the, the beginning, I guess, of what you just said. But uh, one thing that kind of came to me was um, I, there's a guy I listen to and read books from. His name's John Acuff, and uh, he's a speaker and author he's and things dude. like that. Yeah, and and he he says that his his him and his wife have this like thing where he'll say something or bring an idea to her or something like that, and she will say something like, "Do you want advice or agreement?" Yeah, uh, and and I think that that's something that we all need to ask ourselves. You know, when you you, when you're about to ask somebody for help, when you're about to ask somebody for advice, are you looking for them to agree with you or to help you? 
You know, and, and I think we, we get guilty of all oftentimes wanting someone to agree with us. We don't want actual advice. We don't want actual help. We just want somebody to tell us that we're right, yeah. that, that what we want is the right thing and that yeah. what we're doing is the right thing. Assurance. Uh, yeah, we want that assurance. We want we want that acceptability from yeah. other people. And that, you know, we, we, we talked about that a lot, too. And, and and going back to kind of what you ended on there, you know, the the, the whole idea of, you know, we can't change um, somebody else is one of the biggest things that I've struggled with my whole life. Uh, oh, you know, man. is that that. that whole mindset of, yeah. you know, I, I expect, and again, I put my expectations on other people. Right. I want people to do what I want them to do, how I want them to do it, when I want them to do it, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, and, and it is a very difficult habit to break. Um, it is a very, very difficult habit to break. You know, because you, you get into that mindset of, you know, we're, we're naturally selfish human beings. Your flag, as the Bible says, you know, the spirit is strong, but your flesh is weak. Yeah. You know, it, your flesh is weak. It will fall back into that, those old habits and mindsets very easily, very quickly. If you're not, you know, strengthening your spirit, if you're not focusing on that, um, you know, and, and giving, giving that to God, you know, and so it, it is so vital, so important for, for us to try to take that time, you know, to focus on us, to not, to stop, to stop spending so much time worried about and focus on you know and again it seems like every you know i guess it's only been two weeks now but uh that you know every time we talk about the social media fast you know i feel like god is leading me down that direction as well and you know mm-hmm. I, and and i'm, I'm going to look into it and pray about it and hopefully that because it's going to be tough hopefully he tells right me yeah, to go in a different I'm direction looking for, i'm looking for advice not <laughs> accepting them. uh but again i, I think it's because it, it is such a uh a, a, i mean it because it really is and i think my my difficulty with letting it go should be all i need to know to let it go yeah. uh you know and, and i think that that's that's true in a lot of people's lives for about a lot of different things but you know because it is hard you know and i think you know just to to wrap up my thoughts on this whole this whole episode here is just because you know it it is something that i struggle with a lot you know i I need to ask myself that question you know why do i post what i post and i do agree and i'll be the first to say that a lot of it is validation you know i like Mm -hmm. it when people laugh at what i post i like it when people comment and talk to me about what i post you know i I like it when people look at me and and compliment me and all those sorts of things and i mean i know that sounds very vain uh, but i think a lot a lot of yep. us do it for yeah, that, though. Yeah, I, think, I mean, it's not a. I don't think. At least I'm honest about you, it. Right, right. <laughs> but I think it's a vain thing. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. But why? But here's the here's the thing. If you look at 95 percent of what we post, of what people post on mm-hmm. Facebook, it's it's you know it's it's accomplishments, it's pictures, it's traveling, it's mm-hmm. you know things like that. Now, the the question that I'm going to ask is: Is it helpful mm-hmm. question mark is it helpful what you're posting is it, is, encouraging? It, is it encouraging is it helpful is it you know whatever the case may be now you know if 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 it's like you know um if it's if if it's oh man if it has no substance to it mm-hmm. you know if it has no substance to it the question becomes why did you post it mm-hmm. and i mean if we're just being real like we just we 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 like people's acceptance. Mm-hmm. We like people's likes and we like people's hearts and we like people's thumbs up and we like people's validation or acceptance or encouragement or, or, or whatever the case may be. Like it, it is, I think it, it, and I, man, I think it's okay to a certain extent. But it shouldn't be the driving force mm-hmm. of why you do what you do, because we are social creatures, and and and, and I, I think mm-hmm. liking and 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 loving something and hand clapping for somebody is perfectly healthy and normal. Mm-hmm. I, I I really do. But again, is if What's it the is the pla- it, heart placement yeah, behind is it? it if it if the driving process or the driving reason as to why you're doing it. As to why you're doing it is to get attention or to get the likes or to get the thumbs or to get the hearts or to get the, you know, the emojis or whatever the case is. If that is your true reasoning, then yes, that is very Mm -hmm. vain. And going back to what we talked about today, if that is the reason why you're doing it, you are placing your emotions, you're placing your, your, your grace, your love, your mercy, your your, joy, your joy, your peace, you're placing all of that in the hands of other people. And when people don't react, watch. When people don't react, it hurts. Mm -hmm. It does. You post a picture that you think is like the bomb.com, you know, bomb diggity yo. And you're like, man, this is going to blow the internet away. And you get 12 likes. Mm -hmm. You get 
angry, mad. You didn't. You, why didn't you like my post? You didn't see my picture on that. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're. I've gone so far to repost it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people will share the post that <laughs> yeah. they just posted. You know, and it's like, what is deleted and repost it? Maybe yeah. not enough people are awake at that time of the right? day, right? <laughs> and and it's like, so so then you become frustrated mm-hmm. and you become angry and you become well, and then then your self worth starts taking a hit. Well, maybe nobody really cares about me, and nobody, mm-hmm. and it's like you're placing all of that in the hands of other people so toxic it is toxic Mm. man and before you know it you have a whole different realm or scope of how you see yourself because of you placing those things and those abilities in other people's hands Mm -hmm. and you're just allowing people to toy with your emotions day after day moment after moment time after time and it is a like you said it is a toxic relationship but it's also we circled this really big word up there today hypocrite Mm mm-hmm we circled this really big word, hypocrite, because we cannot be the people. Do you have anything to say? No, go ahead. Here. Okay. No, no, no. I mean, like, just at the end here. I know we're getting towards the end, um, but we circled this word hypocrite really big because Christians, if you are a Christian, and, and if you're not, man, I, I invite you. Listen, it mm-hmm. is a crazy, crazy walk. It is tough. It is hard. It is difficult. Let me get all the bad words out of the way first. But at the end of the day, it is the most rewarding thing Mm -hmm. that you will ever do in your lifetime. Um, But Christians are supposed to be these people that have this ball of energy, this light, salt of the earth. These people that are free, free, free indeed. Yet we sing that. Mm -hmm. We're free, free, forever, amen. You know, like Mm -hmm. we sing these, we sing these songs. We read this scripture, man. We, we are supposed to be free. Free of what? Free of everything. Free of oppression. Free of sin. Free of um, pfft, what else you want to throw out there, man? I mean, just anger, anxiety, of, yes, worry, yeah. stress. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for all the words. <laughs> we're supposed to be free of all of these things. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we're supposed to be the catalyst, the leaders mm-hmm. of this freedom movement in Jesus. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. freedom. So... Mm, Let me help you. So if we're inviting Jesus into our hearts and lives, that means that the Spirit of God lives within us, right? So if the Spirit of the Lord lives within us, then there should be freedom from within us. Well, freedom from within us should emulate and emanate, right? Right. It should be be emanate, yeah. From within us to out of us, Mm -hmm. which means that it should be reflective in our words, in our thought processes, in our posts, in our just our everyday lives. And it's not. Mm Mm-mm. And so we say we have Jesus who gives true freedom, but then we live in a totally different aspect. And that's where the word hypocrite comes from, where people don't want to come to church. People don't want to hear a podcast. People don't want to watch a video of people who say they know Jesus, who say they have Jesus, who say they operate in this freedom. And yet are some of the most depressed, anxious, angry, frustrated, broken, addicted people mm-hmm. that we know today. And it's not because of it's not because of other people's choices, decisions, and sin. It's because we are focusing on other people's decision making, processes, and sin. And we are allowing those to become excuses for us not to address what we have going on in our own lives. As I said today, and then I'll let Nick say something if he wants to, until we put down what people have done to us, we can never pick up what Jesus done for us. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. And until we operate in that mentality, man, we will always have our emotions played with. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I'd, I've said this a thousand times, you know, we, we are a very reactive culture. Uh, you know, we, we see things, we react to it. We don't think, we don't stop, we don't think, you know, pray, we don't do anything that we're supposed to do. You know, we, we see something, we react, we expect the best of people, even though they suck. Um, and, you know, we, it, I think, you know, we, for, for as often and as, you know, I guess for as often as we say people suck and as much as we know people suck, we still, it, you know, we still want their validation. We know we, we still yeah. want, 
Yeah. We, we still want them to give uh, you know us some sense of joy and peace mm-hmm. in our lives. That you know, and I talked about this. You know, and I was I was praying for some people this you know this afternoon. You know, I, I was praying that you know we we stop trying to search for that peace and that joy and that validation from other people that only God can give us. Yep. You know, and we you know we the Bible says that we should turn to God for those things. Yet we constantly turn to things and people and places and situations in this world for it. You know, and, and it's just. It, it's as as we just said, you know, it's, it's a very toxic relationship. You know, we, we're expecting better from people who we consider worse than us sometimes. You know, and I, I think that that's kind of a crazy oxymoron if you want to call it that. But yeah. you know, it, it's just we we have to get, um, I guess, better at. Again, you know, focusing on, you know, ask, I guess uh, all this to say, we, we need to make sure that we're, we're reminding ourselves, you know, what about you? I think this is kind of what I'm going to call the episode. What about you? You know, yeah. thinking about you, what you were dealing with, what you're struggling with. Why do you do the things you do? Why do you say the things you say? Why do you feel the way you feel? Why do you need that validation from other people? Why is God not enough for you? Mm-hmm. Why is the Bible not enough for you? Why is this not enough? You know, why is that not enough? And, you know, we, we have to ask ourselves that question at the end of the day, you know, what about you? What about you is unhappy? What about you is unsatisfied or discontent right now? What about you is causing you to feel this way? What about you is causing you to 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 stray further from God, seeking the validation of people rather than Him? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I think we we just need to ask ourselves that that question and do that deep dive in in ourselves, in our psyche, in our minds, in our heart. Ask ourselves, you know, what why do I why do I post this? Why do I feel the need to do this or say this? Why do I feel the need to to you know to be the center of attention? Why do I feel the need to always have people looking at me and and, and agree? Agreeing with me and all those sorts of things, you know, asking ourselves those questions, you know, it will really put, I think, a, a different viewpoint on life for you. Um, you know, and I know, like I said, just over the past few couple of weeks here where we've been talking about, you know, this, the social media cleanse and in and of itself, uh, you know, the basic principles behind it of, you know, replacing other people's validation for God's validation, you know, focusing more on time with, with, with God, with our families, with, mm-hmm. you know, all those sorts of things and how much more important that is rather than, you know, again, I, I, I'm very, very guilty of it. You know, like I said, this message today spoke directly to me a lot of times in a lot of ways. I'll put it that way. Uh, you know, it, it just, you know, cause I mean, there are times when I'll post stuff just for the, the sole reaction of other people, mm-hmm. you know, just to see what other people will say, you know, and I, and I, this whole time we were having this and I'll, I'll, I'll end on this, but Thank God. As, I know, right? No. Um, but, you know, as, as you were kind of mentioning all this stuff, it's been running through my mind, and I just keep forgetting to say it. But, you know, I, I oftentimes think that, you know, we, we post these things, as, you know, we always say keeping up with the Joneses, but we, we neglect the people who can't. Uh, you know, you know I'm, I'm on Facebook, and I'll post about whether, you know, going to a convention or, got, mm-hmm. you know, getting a, a new car or getting a new this or, you know, you know, going to vacations or going to this, doing that, concerts or, you know, uh, theme parks, whatever. You know, we're, we're posting all these highlight reels all the time and you know we're, we're constantly trying to you know this person who you know, I, I'm going to say it this way this person who we think has it better than we do we want to show that we have a good life too mm-hmm. and that we're doing fun things too and that we, we we know how to do you know life too but we, we neglect those people who are looking up to us and I, I remember this meme um, of this person who's looking at this brand new like $100,000 car is saying oh I wish I could have that while they're driving their $50,000 car mm-hmm. and then you got this person driving an old beat up clunker that they paid for with cash and have had for 27 years and they're like man I wish I could have a new car. Mm-hmm. And then you see this guy driving down the road on a bicycle looking at that old beat up car saying, man, I wish I had a car. And then you see a guy up in a wheelchair saying, you know, looking down and saying, I wish I could even walk. You know, and we, we, we neglect those people backwards. We're always looking to the people ahead of us or yep. quote unquote ahead of us. Yep. And we never think about what we post and how it makes the people, you know, who have less than us feel, you mm-hmm. know, and these people who are like, oh, God, you know, I, I wish I could have that. I wish I could have that. I wish I could have what they're doing, what they're being. And, and to me, that is not godly. You know, we're, we're making these people envious you know we're promoting sin mm-hmm. you know we're, we're promoting sin in these people's hearts you know by, by saying oh, look at what i have look at what i have we're not saying it physically but what we're really saying is you know i bet you wish you could have this i bet you right. wish you could do this you know and and, and that is a, to me a very selfish mentality for us to have and so bringing it all back to the end you know again i just want us to ask ask that question you know what about you why do you do this I, you know look we, we've said it a thousand times you know looking in the mirror before you ever pay you know 
look at somebody else. You know, look in the mirror, ask yourself, you know, what you're dealing with, what you're struggling with. Get right with yourself, get right with God before you ever even think about looking at somebody else. You know, and again, you know, even if you feel that need, you know, that one, that famous Bible story of, you know, the, the girl that was brought before Jesus and, you know, he was just drawn in the sand below him and asked the first person to throw a stone who has no sin and mm-hmm. nobody threw a stone. They all yeah. walked away. You know, it, that, that, that famous story, we talk about it all the time when it comes to judgment, but it, it really is true. You know, before you bring anybody else, else before God, bring yourself before God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to write that down. Actually, that was something else that the Spirit spoke to me about. You know, if you've got one thing that you can get better at, then drop your stone. Mm -hmm. Uh, Drop your stone, you know, and work on you. So, we love you so much, man. I hope this has been informative uh, and and hope that something is said and done inside of this thing that will help change your life. We always say, you know, you can always leave a comment. You can always reach out to us, uh, Uh What's our email, uh, FruitionChurchKY. Or, sorry, FruitionChurchKY at gmail.com. Yeah, so you can always you send us an email as well. Um, there's just so many different ways to contact us. Just get on Facebook or YouTube and type in Fruition Church. You know, um, you can always leave a comment on a video or whatever the case is man but you know we want to know you're out there we want to know we're, that that you know how we can pray for you and uh, and things like that so again from the bottom of our hearts we say thank you uh, we appreciate you so much and until we see you again be blessed even when you feel low you can still go even when you feel slow you can still go even when there's no hope you can still go i never answered a no man i still go 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 As always, this is PKR, and for my sidekick, Nick, we say thank you very much for hitting that download button on People Suck, Love Them Anyways. Be sure to tell a friend, tell a family member to hit that download button as well. And as always, we say thank you. Be blessed. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go.